Good morning and welcome back to the One Celtic Fans View. Celtic played Dundee tonight and the Dundee manager Tony Doherty has been talking about an ex-Dundee player and he's not surprised by the start that Luke McCown has had at Celtic. Um, the former Dundee player has had an interesting start to his Celtic career. He's over the moon, he's one of us, he's, he's a Celtic fan living the dream of everyone saying, well even he says that. But uh, the Dundee manager says that they, they are underdogs going into the game after a disappointing defeat to St Johnston at the weekend. The Dundee manager said, I don't think it's a free hit because I think that's disrespectful to Dundee if anyone thinks that we're a free hit. Um, it's disrespectful to Celtic because we know how professional each team is. I don't think Celtic, anyone at Celtic, I think it's strange that he's come out with that com comment because I don't think anyone at Celtic thinks it's a free hit. You know, Brendan Rodgers always says you've got to work hard to beat every single team in Scotland. So I don't know where he's getting that from. And it, it goes on to say the Dundee manager, we're going down there with a level of competition we're playing against. Uh, they're in the champ they're the champions for a reason. They're a brilliant football team. We know we need to be at our best and stay focused. It's a full squad game, uh, but the players need to execute the game plan for the complete 90 minutes to try and hold Celtic back. St Johnson came from one behind in a controversial last minute winner at the weekend. However, um, they're now focused on tonight's tough test. It's uh, something we need to address is our defence. Uh, the ball came in a last minute free kick from the corner. Uh, the last minute kick from the corner. Well, Celtic are good at last minute goals, mate. Um, listen, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So it's just important that we address these things over the season. Uh, Luke McCowan will be playing for Celtic tonight. The midfielder signed on transfer deadline day and Doherty admitted that he's not surprised at the slightest. Then the manager went on to say, I knew his qualities when we had him. He's not just a player, as a person as well and everything he brings. So absolutely no surprise to me. I speak with him quite regularly and I'm pleased that he's doing really well. And he's an opponent tomorrow and, and we'll be going all out to try and stop him and I'll be happy with that, says the Dundee manager. We give him a lot of leadership here uh, that he hadn't previously had and he absolutely responded to that. He's kicked on as a result, I think, as a player. And someone asked in the, in the comments last night, do you think that, that Luke McCowan would celebrate scoring a goal against Dundee? Yes, he would celebrate, but it would be team it will be a team celebration if he does score tonight because he's got a lot of respect because you've got to remember from where he came from before he got his chance at, at dundee and let's face it he was never going to reach the heights of playing in the champions league i think that was from as, as far from his wildest dreams luke mccown as any of us expected but the fact that he has came to celtic and he's excelled as a player and it seems to be a sort of grown up quite quick as a Celtic player but anyway Michael Stewart has been talking uh, about Celtic as well and it's something that no one's really been speaking about um, we've kind of touched it on this channel about players that came in in the summer but was last summer the best transfer window in a lot a lot of years for Celtic we managed to get out some more of the deadwood from the season before. A lot of the players that came in that were completely useless and, and surplus to requirements. Um, we got rid of quite a lot of them. We got rid of a lot of deadwood that were at Celtic. But the players we've got in and the players that we brought in to a man, which is unusual, have all made an impact at Celtic. They've all made an impact. And I think that that is, has to be one of the first seasons, apart from Ange Postacoglu, when he came in, uh, but he made wholesale changes in the team that was needed uh, because of, there was that many players sort of leaving Celtic and uh, that had been here and done the distance. I think that the fact that Brendan Rodgers, we never expected him to bring in as many players as he did. He did make a joke about bringing in uh, seven or eight players at the beginning of the transfer window when people were questioning him not getting the players in quick enough. Uh, the fact that he brought in two fantastic goalkeepers, one for the future, one that's an international goalkeeper, remember, and but he's seen as Celtic as one for the future. Celtic wanted to maintain a level of experience in goals and I think having Kasper Schmeichel in goals, especially for... The Champions League, I think we would have got, 
the scorelines might have been even worse in the Champions League. The fact that they were, were in the, the, we then went out and bought Adam Ida as a panic buy, we should have got him in way earlier in the transfer window. And, and I think that as soon as Kyogo went down injured, and the writing was on the wall to get him in, and even Brendan Rogers laughed at how quick that the upstairs people reacted to getting in another striker. Now, talking about another striker, we'll talk about that situation in a minute because it looks like Dyson Maida will be playing second fiddle as striker this evening. So will he start or will he be on the bench for that fact? Uh, so that's going to be an interesting one to watch tonight. Make sure you join us an hour and 15 minutes before kick-off this evening when uh, the team is released and we can talk about the shock, if there is any, because there was a big shock at the weekend when Callum McGregor wasn't in the team. But anyway, was this summer, was the summer that was just passed was that the most successful summer? The fact that we brought in eight players and there weren't bargain players, you know, it wasn't bargain basement stuff that Celtic have, been, that have done before. Um, and when you look at it, the injury concerns to Cameron Carter Vickers again at the start of the season, we needed a left back. We've been shouting out about a left back for a long time, which actually worked well because we we brought in Alex Bay on loan. He's come in and been a fantastic addition to the squad. Austin Trusty was brought in late towards the, the end of the transfer window. He's been an absolute... A lot of people dismissed the player at the beginning and people need to just let players just settle in a bit. I think too many times we jump on players and people even said it about young Alex Bay saying that he wasn't good enough for Celtic. Well, the young player that's on contract to 2026 with an option of a two-year extra after 2026, Barcelona must have high, high hopes for him. But those two players have come and done exactly, they've done fantastic. And then when you, you look at the midfield players, Paulo Bernardo was bought again. He was bought uh, after being on loan uh, the season before. We brought in Arnie Engels and Luke McCowan. And that made up five players. We never expected to bring in five players. But then the manager went and, and um, you know, I think with the goalkeeping situation, I think it has to be absolutely lauded. The, the fact that it has to be applauded the fact that we went out and got Casper Schmeichel because he's been fantastic. Some people will say, yeah, yeah, he's passed it. But with the saves that he's made so far this season, I think that that summer, We'll, we will look back at it as Celtic fans, and I think we'll look back as, at last summer as one of the most important in many, many years as a Celtic fan. Because Brendan Rodgers brought in players and he put them on four- and five-year contracts, which wasn't really done before. And it's all about protecting their assets and the, and the, the business model of the club. And I you know bringing in players at nine million, bringing in players at 11 million, Celtic are obviously expecting to try and sell them on in the future at vastly increased profits. Um, but I just think that every single player that was brought in has fitted in and has contributed to the first team this summer, uh, this season, which is the first time in a long time. Usually players come in and, and they get their way, they, they see themselves back out of the team. I mean, look at Mark Norobsky. He's still sitting on the bench and start, can't get near the team. And he was one of the players that were brought in in the previous summer. Anyway, Celtic are well stocked when it comes to players across most positions. I think the only one concerning now is what's going to happen at the left-back area. What additions would Brendan Rodgers like to make in the next transfer window. It's always a difficult window to try and get players in at Christmas, in, in the January, sorry, but uh, we've seen that players did leave last winter transfer window and uh, will we bring players in if to, to replace? And I think that we all know the one position that we need to look at. And the central defence, obviously, Brendan Rodgers has to be ho hopeful that for the foreseeable future, Cameron Carter Vickers manages to stay at 100% fit. Uh, I think we all really, really want to see him. But the big shout tonight, the big shout tonight, and we've seen it at the game at the weekend where Brendan Rodgers moved over Liam Scales so that Austin Trusty could play alongside Cameron Carter Vickers. That's why Trusty was brought in to play alongside Vickers, whether we like it or not. Uh, him and Scales play in the, in the same position, but is Scales good enough to go to that left back position? I don't think he's better than Alex Bally in uh, in that position. So it's going to be interesting tonight to see if he drops Liam Scales or if he drops Austin Trusty. If he drops Austin Trusty, which one will he drop for? And he'll have he will have one eye on the game at the weekend. Um, I mean, it's absolutely paramount that we win the game at the weekend. And it's absolutely paramount that they, we, we keep everyone at least 100% fit 
for the Champions League game in a week's time because that it could have a big impact on the season also. Uh, the fact that Brendan Rodgers has done brilliant, I think, in the transfer window uh, last summer, it makes you think, where can we strengthen in this team? Anyway, the, the teams for tonight uh, will be out an hour and 15 minutes before the game. Make sure that you join us for that. And, and other Celtic news, uh, obviously the Dundee manager thinks that his uh, ex-player uh, is fantastic. Moussa Dumbelli has been shouting out and talking about his love for Celtic once more. Mr Dumbelli, who's now playing in far-off lands, saying that if anyone had told him when he was younger that he would go to Scotland to play, he would have went, nah, I don't think so, I don't really rate Scottish football. Uh, but he said he had the best two years, and when he looks back on the career that he's had, and uh, getting through to the semi-final in the Champions League and stuff, he says still... Which makes him smile the most is the demolition of the Rangers. Yes, he says that is still the best time that he's ever had in his football career so far. Uh, James Forrest has been talking about Luke McCown being the bargain of the summer. I think he's going to be... Will Luke McCown be looked upon as such a bargain like Lubo Moravchik? Now, I'm not suggesting that he's anywhere near Lubo Moravchik's talent and, and definitely nowhere near Luber Maravchik's age. I mean, Luber Maravchik was something like 34 when he came to Celtic. Luke McCown's only 26. But I'm talking about value for money. Will he be put up there in years to come as to be the, the biggest value for money? Because, I mean, modern day, you could say it's sort of in the same sort of valuation as the Henrik Larson, Luber Maravchik's type players. But tell me in the comments section, tell me what you seriously think. Will Luke McCown in the future, I mean, we can't predict what will happen in the future. He might turn out to be complete wash next year. But I think that he can only progress as a player because the fact that he's got that mindset coach and he seems to be working away hard. He knows that he, he can't just turn up. He knows that he needs to turn it on in, in training and turn himself into an even better player. And it was interesting with the interview that he gave after the weekend's game that he thinks he needs to get fitter. And if that's the case... We're going to have some player on our hands. Anyway, uh, there'll be an update video uh, around about 5 o'clock Celtic part-time. There will be the live. Uh, we come before the game, an hour and 15 minutes before the game, where we talk about the team as it is released by Celtic. And then we'll be going live 10 minutes before the end of the game tonight. Uh, yeah, we will go live around about 10 minutes before the end of the game. And hopefully we'll have a bit of a laugh and giggle after the game, because hopefully the results would mean that Celtic are still top of the table. And hopefully it means Aberdeen are still on the same points as Celtic. And if that happens, we can just only imagine the meltdown that will happen online. And we will be here to witness it. And on that note, have an absolutely fantastic day. Yes, you, because you've still watched to the end. And thank you for watching right to the end. So you that's still watching at this point, thank you very much. And thank you to all the Celtic fans all around the world.